Oh, good morning everybody and welcome to uh, Wednesday and to save confusion so it wasn't always looking like it was the same um, <laughs> same video I thought I'd come to the back of our house and uh, yeah, start with another tree um, and uh, that's the size of our yard not much to jump in and that's the guinea pig house in front of us and uh, yeah it's not used, the space we're used to, but it is what it is. And uh, it's another beautiful day here in Brisbane. A bit overcast at, in some places, but other than that, uh, lovely. At least the temperatures are cooler overnight and it's uh, easier to sleep too, which is a, a very good thing. This morning's uh, devotional, I just wanted to talk about um, something that's, uh, I guess, close to our, some hearts um, and for others it's just um, a part of the society we live in or it's something we don't even give a thought to and that's the the poor in our society and who are the poor um, how do you define poor you know the the world um, um, organization uh, UNICEF and so forth would uh, consider that uh, poverty is measured at earning less than two dollars per day but do you have to or not have to earn money to be considered poor um, what is poverty what does it look like and this morning to, to tr kind of help trigger that a little I just wanted to look at uh, Psalm <coughs> pardon me Psalm 41 and in Psalm 41 it starts this way Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. He will be blessed on the earth, and you will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. You will sustain him on his sick bed. And on the surface, that seems, well, that's good. All I have to do for the Lord to sustain me and bless me is to consider the poor. And I think that's the problem with, with the English uh, translated from the original, is consider something means you give it a thought, a passing thought, but it doesn't call an action. It doesn't, doesn't call you action. It doesn't say um, to you that you have to do anything. Um, I can consider the weather and then go about the rest of my day blithely. I can consider the guy across the road has a car and then not think about it again. I can consider that this lawn in my backyard needs to be mowed again and then they'll, no, they're not bother starting the mower. None of that of considering is a call to action. And let's look at the word deeper. And the word to consider in the Hebrew it means that, that not only do you consider but that there is an action Im implied with that that something will, will motivate you as you consider it, something will motivate you to do something about it. We spend a lot of our lives considering and doing nothing with it. You know, the, the road to heaven is paved with good intentions. Um, but Jesus in his dialogue with people would always point out situations and then tell a parable or a story around it to get people to not only consider what was the story was about but then there was a call to action to do something with the story and the psalm goes on to say I said to the Lord be merciful to me heal my soul for I have sinned against you my enemies speak evil of me when will he die and his name perish they say if he comes to see me, he speaks lies. His heart gathers iniquity. When it goes, when he goes out, he tells it. And, and it's a challenge in that part of the psalm that if you tell people you, you are considering the poor or you're doing something, um, do it. There, there will be those that will stand against you. There will be those who, who say, no, no, he's doing it for his own gains. But to consider the poor and to consider the, the elements and the things going on around you, and then to be called to action to do something. You know, the call is, Lord, be merciful. I, you know, I've, I've, I've done these things. Um, how do I stand before you? You know, Jesus' example of the sheep and the goats is a classic one, you know, that there was plenty of people, both sides were considering the poor, 
but only one side considered them worthy enough to actually help to do something about. And Jesus says, well, you can come into my rest, but you, I don't know you. I don't know who you are. So I guess in that this morning, as we think about uh, the poor in our society, in the world around us, it's a lot more than just the physical needs of poverty or, or poorness that we see. You know, in the, in, the, in, our, in the soup kitchens and the food hamper lines and those sorts of things. And it's good to do those things and help those people. But when I think of the poor, not only is it the physical need, I think of the spiritual need. You know, those who Jesus mentions at the start of the Sermon on the Mount, the poor in spirit. And when I consider that, it's not enough to think about, oh, those poor people that don't know Jesus. As I consider that, it should be a call to action. It should be a call to each of us who know Jesus to do something about that, to share Jesus with one other person, to help them out of the poorness of their spirit. So if you get a chance today, and many of us, many of you have, and us have got a chance in this lockdown, pick up the phone, ring somebody. You don't have to think or know they're poor in spirit, but just ring somebody and make that connection. Make that phone call that may just lift somebody out of a poorness of spirit today. Let's pray together. Father, I want to thank you for this day, the challenges ahead of it. Yes, but Lord, you are in control of all things and we know that you have us by the hand and that you're walking us along, Lord. And the text this morning in Psalm, the first verse, to consider the poor. Lord, I pray that we consider not only the physically poor, but the spiritually poor, Lord. And Lord, that as we recognize that we ourselves are uh, at times spiritually poor, I pray, Lord, that we are, as we are blessed by the knowledge that you will pick us up and lift us and move us forward, I pray, Lord, that we bless others with that knowledge, and that knowledge being Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we thank you for all things before this day. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my friends, from my backyard to your backyard, I hope you have a fantastic day and I hope that you stay safe and well. And until we see each other again, take care and God bless. I'll see you soon.